I'm Cesar Delgado from Back Roads of Illinois podcast. Welcome to the show with us for today. I am joining with Chip Nellinger on this afternoon. Chip and Morton, Illinois. He is the president of Blue Reef Finance and Morton. Also, we have Arlen Suderman from Stone X in Kansas City, Missouri. He is an economic chief for Stone X. Good afternoon. How are you guys today? I'm glad you are joining us for the show with you guys. It's good to be here today. Doing well, Caesar. Glad to glad to join you. Let's start with Arlen. How are we going to get tight and demand for the world agricultural supply and demand estimate report on this month? I know our listeners about January's report because the supply is pretty short in Brazil and Argentina. Could you tell us about it? Okay, as, as we look at the supply and demand report from WASD, um, what they're really, USD is really telling us is that we're adequately supplied right now. And probably the commodity that is the tightest currently is soybeans. And so that's why soybeans have been trading weather in, in Brazil a little bit more than what the other commodities have. We've been in a commodity deflation mode for managed money over the last 20 months or so, and periodically we'll get a, a, a rally on a headline, but as soon as that headline is passed, then the markets quickly start selling it again. Maybe that'll change following today's Fed meeting. We'll see. Uh, but we generally have adequate supplies, and the market's not too concerned mm -hmm. about supply because they, they fear uh, weak demand due to the economic slowdown that we're in. Chip. Otherwise, how is the corn stock in the report? How is affected by the trade in Brazil's issue with the weather? Yeah, the, the corn stocks uh, number in the most recent uh, crop report was, was down just a tick, uh, 25 million bushels. I believe it was uh, uh, a small bump up um, in uh, exports that did that. And so uh, I think that was pretty wildly anticipated, pretty um, uh, not surprising to, to the trade. I think that uh, you know, the second half of your question is the, is the big question, right? It's been less than ideal in uh, Brazil with their early growing season here. They were uh, quite a bit delayed on their uh, planting in the northern uh, third, the northern half of Brazil because it was too dry and it uh, slowed their planting progress down. So then the question becomes, um, can they get those beans out uh, <laughs> early to, or, or are they going to kind of cut short their second crop corn season? They do grow a fair amount of first crop corn. So it has been uh, really less than ideal weather in, uh, in Brazil in particular, uh, too wet to the South, too hot and dry to the North. It looks like that forecast continues uh, fairly challenging for them. And so the next six weeks or so, eight weeks, uh, is going to be important that they kind of get some better rains and and maybe keep away from some of these uh, really uh, you know triple digit heat down there, and um, that's that's going to be something that could affect the market here in the short run, and it's going to be kind of uh, day by day, hour by hour with each forecast that comes out that could drive some volatility here. Or so. I think that's a ways out ahead of us um, before we start talking about about that. I mean, I think things are just tight enough in the most recent uh, price break that we've seen that Arlen mentioned here over the last 18 months. We've kind of seen some deflationary um, selling across the commodity sector. I think we're at a fair value for now. And, and I, now I think it's about seeing over the next, um, you know, three months, two, three months, what the Southern hemisphere production is going to be. And then on into our growing season here, um, you know, in the United States this spring and summer, 
Um, now, if everything goes right in the Southern Hemisphere and they raise a big second crop corn and no problems there, and we plant a bunch of acres here and, right. and raise a, a record crop, you know, maybe a year from now, right. uh, you can't rule out a three in front of corn, but I, I don't think that's going to happen in the next 90 days. Um, but, you know, uh, never say never. And if we continue to grow big crops across the world, certainly that could be a possibility again. Stock expansion. I am going to with Arlen first. Arlen, how is compare prices for this livestock expansion in the United States over in Midwest? Could you explain the audience? Well, we've seen quite a collapse in cattle prices here over the last almost three months, and it's been pretty discouraging to the cattle feeders overall. And a big portion of that is because um, we still have problems in the cattle industry. Weather has been a big part of that. We still have not expanded the cow herd. In fact, if you look at uh, cow slaughter data, we're still contracting the cow herd, the breeding herd. Uh, so we do have tighter numbers ahead. Uh, but at the same time, uh, because of the, of the adverse weather in the western half of the country, we've really pulled forward a lot more cattle lighter weights into the feedlots. And so we have bunched up weights. And so you add that combination together and USDA has increased 2024 beef production estimates by about 1.6 billion pounds over the last five months. That's their projection for 2024. That's the equivalent of adding about three weeks worth of production. Um, so therefore, 2024 is now expected to only be down about 3%, about half of what we were talking about at one point. So mm -hmm. the market's adjusting to that. The market saw this coming quicker than what USDA indicated. Question is, are we at that level now where we have finally priced that in? Now, we know that down the road, and right now we're moving that back to maybe the fourth quarter of 2024, we start rebuilding the cow herd. We're going to make things even tighter as we hold back heifers. The hog market, on the other hand, uh, we've had to deal with a lot of things. We were trying to figure out how we priced it in. We had Prop 12 in California that we were pricing in last summer, and then we got the exemption. As long as they had it in state, they could use it until January 1st. We're almost to January 1st now, so are we going to fi suddenly find that we have a surplus of pork, or have we made the adjustments in the industry? Again, we've been dealing with heavy carcass weights there, um, and the numbers have kind of exceeded what USDA projected in the quarterly hogs and pigs reports as well. But Unlike cattle, we've been absorbing that production better. Part of it is because imports have been down and exports have been up. We've had a good export year and imports have been down and and we've seen some consumer shift from the down to value chain from beef to pork. And so we've been kind of keeping up and we're right now in the middle of our strongest slaughter of the year as a result of those things that I mentioned. And uh, so we've been keeping up. So if we can survive the Prop 12 adjustment after the 1st of January, then maybe we can stabilize this market a little bit better and maybe build a foundation under it. You can explain the audience about this quarter in the cattle markets for this cattle expansion, Chip. Yeah, you know, I, I think Arlen did a, a good job there as far as the the cattle experience, kind of a give and take here with uh, the short run, uh, really putting a lot of weight, record amount of weight on carcasses. And so we're, we're putting more meat out on the market with fewer cattle than what uh, we're, we're used to. So in the short run, the supply um, is, is adequate and our exports have really uh, taken a turn for the worse at the same time. But in the same breath, like Arlen said, you know, we haven't uh, expanded, um, you know, the, the cow herd yet. Uh, we're still kind of reeling from uh, about three years of of drought conditions across uh, you know some of the uh, some of the plains and in, in far western states. So there's still some issues uh, out there. I think we have expanded the the hog herd a little bit, but from a cattle standpoint, you know the the numbers are stable, but we're putting a lot of meat out on the market because we're you know feeding these cattle to fifteen sixteen hundred pounds now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Finally, Arlen Howe is the corn market is starting off with January's report. Yeah, as we look to the January report, I think one of the keys there is going to be the quarterly stocks report, which will give us a little better idea of what the actual size of the crop is. We've seen a tendency in the November report that USDA increased the size of the crop and really kind of shocked a lot of people in the market. Will they continue to do so? Uh, will they add more bushels or will they pull back? Um, the stocks numbers will give them some indication of that as well as their producer surveys. Um, and that'll really help set the tone. The other piece of that equation is feed usage. Uh, originally, if you look back in May and June, I felt like they were overstating feed usage for the new year. But as far down as we have brought prices, that we've talked to already about the heavier weights that we're taking hogs into cattle right now. Part of that is because feed has cheapened up. And so when prices come down for feed, we tend to feed animals a little bit longer. And so we do increase our feed usage. So perhaps that's okay. Um, ethanol demand, I think, is going to be good, probably a little bit more than what USDA is saying for corn. Um, so then that leaves what are exports going to do? And that's a big question mark yet to be answered. Uh, typically, if you look at the seasonality, we should double uh, corn export shipments on a weekly basis in the first quarter of the year. That's a time period when Brazil's focused on shipping soybeans and Argentina um, hasn't harvested corn yet, um, so it gives us a window of opportunity. So if we're going to increase our corn exports to try to pull ending stocks below 2 billion bushels, we need to be able to rapidly accelerate our corn demand in the first quarter of the year. And we'll see what USDA has to say about that in the January report. I tend to be a skeptic at this point. Um, that doesn't mean that I think prices are going to go lower. They certainly can, as Chip has already alluded, um, can certainly happen. But if, if we're able to convince the markets that uh, we're out of this deflationary mode, um, then perhaps we can start to see money come back in and we can manage supply and demand at a more stable price level. Uh, kind of settle, uh, I want to say explained the weather situation very well there. The problem that we're facing now is a very mixed message out of that. As a former agronomist who walked many, many fields, um, as I look at the rainfall and the temperature data from Brazil, I would expect a short crop. But all the private estimates coming out so far are still looking for a near record to record soybean crop. Now I anticipate those production estimates based on the forecast that's still out there and the current weather that's happening now as we go into pod fill and or pod set and pod fill that those estimates will come down. But even talking to one of our people down there who spent time studying in the United States as a as a good handle on agronomy, uh, very in touch with the market as I was talking to him this week. I, I said, so, uh, Jonas, how is it? And he said, oh, it's bad. It's bad, Arlen. And um, mm -hmm. I said, so you, I take it you disagree with our customer survey in Brazil that said the crop is 161.9 million metric tons. He said, yeah, I'm sorry to say I do disagree with it. So I said, okay, based on what you know, and you've been talking to your customers and looking at the fields, where would you put Brazil's production estimate? And he said, oh, probably down 158. And saying, Jonas, 158 is not bullish. Um, as I look at it, I think right. we need to see a crop closer to 145 to 147 million <laughs> metric tons before we can really justify a need to increase uh, U.S. exports, tightening up our stocks enough to justify rationing demand with higher prices here in the States. Um, and uh, so we'll see how this plays out. We may have another rally in this market yet. The key is when do they start harvesting enough soybeans to export? They will start harvesting soybeans here right around the turn of the calendar. Um, will it be enough to fill the shipment orders? That's the key question going forward. It's going to be a long time. My pleasure that you joined the show for today. Thanks.
Thanks to turned in by this discussion panel with you guys. We're honored to be here. Thanks, Caesar. Always thanks always for familiar. listening to this discussion panel with Chip Nellinger and Arlen Suter for today from Back Roads of Illinois. I am Caesar Delgado. Have a good day.